Welcome to Reflect on This. Hello, I am Johnny Henshaw. This is the podcast version of devotionals I send to my family and friends. In these devotionals, I share the things I'm learning about the ways and nature of God through applying my study of the scriptures to the world around me. And don't forget to keep listening at the conclusion of today's episode to hear about my recommended resources, such as podcasts that I find helpful and encouraging, books that inspired some of these episodes, and ministries that I want you to know about. So let's get started. Please join me today as we reflect on this. In a previous episode of this podcast, I shared the story of a trip to New England with my wife, the initial disappointments of the first part of the trip, and the truth that my wife helped me to learn to embrace on the remainder of the trip, which turned my disappointment into delight. Well, this seems fine and good for dealing with turning everyday disappointments into delight, But what about the serious challenges of life that bring genuine despair? Two men of the Bible are good examples of how to apply these principles, even when in the midst of despair. Abraham is our first example. God spoke to him, promising him a son through whom many, many people would be blessed. Then he had to wait 25 years for the fulfillment of that promise, the birth of Isaac a very long wait. Then he had to experience the death of that vision, God telling him to sacrifice Isaac. In his obedience, he saw God's supernatural fulfillment of the promise again in the provision of a substitute sacrifice. Through all of this, Abraham stayed the course. He trusted God. He focused on the blessings received, the birth of Isaac, the time he had been able to spend with Isaac as a child, etc., instead of focusing on the agony of the impending sacrifice of Isaac. He went from despair to delight because he focused on the goodness, mercy, promises, and power of God. And so should we. Another example from the Bible is David. Before he was king of Israel, he experienced the despair of having to flee for his life from the men of King Saul. Later in life, he experienced the despair of having his own son Absalom leading a conspiracy against him in an attempt to seize the throne of Israel. During these times of despair, David wrote many of the Psalms. In them, we get excellent insight into how to move from despair to delight. Let's look at a few example verses. Psalms 42.5 says, Why are you in despair, O my soul, and why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, and wait expectantly for Him, for I shall again praise Him for the help of His presence. And Psalms 27.13, I am certain that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Many other scriptures offer encouragement to us as well. Isaiah 41.10 Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. And Hebrews 12.1-2 Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. So what should we do? When we are in despair, number one, run to the Father. Spend time in His presence. This is the source of joy and rest. Psalm 1611 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And Exodus 3314 says, And He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Number two, one powerful way of entering into the presence of God is to read and meditate upon Scripture. 
Let the words of the Bible be like food for your soul. Use the words of Scripture as a part of your worship and prayers. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Number three, cry out to God for help. Psalm 34, 17 says, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. And number four, give thanks for everything. Ephesians 5, 20. This helps us to remember the blessings that God has given in the past. Then give thanks in everything. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 This is the process of thanking God even in the midst of the current despair, which helps us to turn our attention back to God. In other words, giving thanks postures our soul to be more alert to the comfort that God is providing to us in the midst of our despair. Today, I encourage you to reflect on this. Today's featured resource is the Bible Study software package entitled eSword. This free Bible study software is available for download to a wide range of computers and mobile devices, including Windows and Mac computers and Apple and Android tablets and phones. The download includes several free public domain resources, including Bibles, dictionaries, commentaries, devotionals, and maps. You can then download from within the eSword program many more free public domain resources. You can optionally purchase whatever copyrighted resources you want to create a powerful study library. One of the greatest benefits of Bible study with this software is the multi-window display so that you can simultaneously have windows open to a Bible translation, a dictionary, and a commentary. They are automatically linked so that if you select a verse, then the corresponding entry in the selected dictionary and commentary are displayed. You can also easily compare Bible translations by viewing them in parallel windows. For the Bible translations that have embedded Strong's numbers, referencing the corresponding Hebrew or Greek word, you can hover over a Strong's number and a tooltip pops up with the Strong's definition for that word. To learn more and to get a free download of this amazing study tool, on your computer, go to esword.net. That's e-sword.net. On your mobile device, go to your app store and search for E-Sword, that's E-Sword.